you guys really like the idea of reversing the order of an entire Pokemon game, making the final Elite Four your first gym leader and vice versa. So today, we're continuing the trend in everyone's favorite home region, Sinnoh. What kind of chaos and absolute mayhem can we unleash if every single boss fight in Sinnoh was reversed? Who would be the champion of this twisted lineup? Well, sit back, get cozy, drop a like and subscribe, and let's find out. Starting with the first gym leader in this reversed version of Sinnoh, and that's Lucian, the psychic type Elite Four member, now turned first gym leader. Originally, he had a pretty tough final an Elite Four team with heavy special hitters like Espeon and Alakazam, insane tanks like Bronzong, and even some mixed attackers like Galade. So in order to reconstruct his team as the first gym leader, we really have to dive into his character. And with that, Lucian is known as being polite and likes to help out new trainers, kinda great for a first gym leader. His battling style often involves building up his defenses and evading attacks. With this, we got the perfect team for Lucian. He has a Bronzor and his ace, Girafferig. Yeah, yeah, I know it's not a Sinnoh native, but honestly, it fits really well with his character. So now that we're all in agreement, moving on to the second gym leader of this wacky reversed region, and that's the fire type specialist, Flint. Flint is a very confident gym leader, and his whole goal as the second gym leader is to support new trainers and help them grow into the fiery best versions of themselves, and he does this with the following team. A Chimchar, Houndour, and his ace, Magmortar. Now, now, before you start freaking out in the comments, might I remind you that the original second gym leader, Gardenia, also had a fully evolved Roserade as her ace? Plus, the way Flint's team is balanced makes the overall base stat total around, if not lower than Gardenia's original team. But on another note, I think it's really cool that both these characters are naturally the only characters in Sinnoh to use starter Pokemon, and in reverse, they swap roles. Pretty neat. Huh? But now let's say you get past Flint. Well, it's time to go up against the third gym leader, and that's ground type specialist Bertha. Bertha's character is a unique one. She's a very strong observer and uses that skill to help new trainers learn to improve their observation skills in order to become better battlers. Her team is composed of a Hippopotas, a Graveler, and her ace Gliscor. Now, her strategy often involves setting up Sandstorm and then chipping away at opponents, so knowing how to deal with her weather effects fact, at this gym is a definite must. But now let's check out the final Elite Four member turned into a gym leader, and that's the fourth gym leader, Aaron. He likes to be surrounded by nature and bug type Pokemon and tends to train in forests when he's not taking on challengers. But when he does take on the mantle of gym leader, he does so with the following Pokemon. A Skarupi, his Queen B Vespa Queen, and his Ace Yan Mega. Now if you think just because he's a bug type specialist that he'll be a walk in the park? Well then, think again. He's got a plethora of strategies for almost any situation. Okay, awesome. Now you've collected four badges, which means it's time to go up against the fifth gym leader and also Flint's best mate, and that's Volkner, the electric type specialist. However, as the fifth gym leader, he's gone through a tough patch. You see, he used to love battling, but recently has only ever found himself against weak challengers. Ew. And his electrifying personality has since become somewhat cold and empty. Because of this, he doesn't even want to take on any challenges anymore. But after hearing about how the player, you, defeated Team Galactic, warded their most recent plans, and also defeated his best mate Flint, well then, he starts to develop a spark for battling again. He accepts her challenge and sends out his team of Raichu, Luxray, and an Electivire each complementing his affinity with electricity and sure to give you a proper challenge. Once you beat the now happy Volkner, you uncover his smile that has eluded him for quite some time, so pat yourselves on the back real quick for that one. Next up is the sixth gym leader, and that's Candice, the ice type specialist. Overall, she's an incredibly nice person who enjoys the fun of surprising her friends in unpredictable ways like surprise parties or even ambush attacks. But with so much energy, her battling approach is often very hard to decipher and leaves many challengers struggling to keep up. Her team as the sixth gym leader is a Sneasel, Frostlass, and her ace, Abomasnow, each Pokemon reflecting a bit of her own personality. Might I recommend you bring a heavy winter coat for this gym battle? But now let's say you beat Candice, well then, next up is the seventh gym leader, Byron. 
the Steel Type Specialist. Byron specializes in strong defenses and is also very enthusiastic about digging holes and uncovering fossils. I mean, different strokes for different folks, I guess. But this can be seen as a reflection with his team. He's got a Laron, a Probopass, a Steelix, and his Ace Bastodon. Very defensive Pokemon who will require a strategic approach other than just the barrage of attacking moves that are the typical answers for other gyms. So good luck with this one. But hey, look at you. You've made it to the final gym leader and you're probably wondering who it is. Well, first, is this reverse version based on Platinum, Diamond, or Pearl? Because if you're aware of those games, they all have a different fifth gym leader. But to make things a little simple and because it's my favorite version, this order is going to be based on Platinum. So that means our final gym leader is none other than Crasher Wake, aka Chuck from Johto with a really bad mask. Now Chuck, I mean Crasher, is a very lively person with a booming voice. He's trained his Pokemon to have top of the line stamina and to even take powerful attacks like a Giga Impact right on the chin. And his team of watery companions are made up of Gyarados, Octillery, Waxire, and his ace Floatzel, one of the fastest water type Pokemon. Each of his Pokemon has a unique move pool that gives him a range of coverage moves, which means this final gym battle is going to really test your skill. But congratulations, trainer, you've collected all eight badges, and now it's time to take on the reversed Elite Four of this region. But before we do that, check out this poor Gibble. Something's stuck in his tooth there. I wonder what it could be. Aw, oh, poor little guy, it's the subscribe button. Let's help him out by nudging that button and getting this channel to 30k. We're only under 500 subs away. Gibble thanks you. Okay, okay, now let's get back to the Elite Four, and the first member is none other than Maylene, the fighting type specialist. She is regarded as a warrior trainer with a competitive spirit. Her athletic skills as well as her type affinity really make her quite a challenge as an Elite Four member. Her team consists of a Hitmontop, Toxicroak, Metacham, Machamp, and her Ace Lucario. Each of her Pokemon having an amazing blend of offensive and defensive moves, making her one of the more challenging first Elite Four members ever. But let's just say you kept your Route 1 bird Pokemon and defeated Maylene without any problems. Well then, you get to go up against the second Elite Four member, Fantina, the Ghost-type specialist. She's also a top coordinator in the region who possesses a multitude of skills. This makes her quite the challenge. She also uses her Ghost-type affinity to leave her opponents often confused and fear-stricken. Her team consists of a Spirit Toon, Driflim, Gengar, Husknor, and her ace Miss Magius. And each of her Pokemon have a tendency to catch opponents off guard with their ghostly antics. But that doesn't stop you because you plow your way through to the third Elite Four member, and actually the first ever Grass type Elite Four member, and that's none other than Gardenia. What can I say about good old Gardenia? She's just as tough, if not tougher, than her original gym leader appearance. But as an Elite Four member, her Grass types dominate the battlefield. She's got a Cherum with access to Sunny Day, and her next floor fill users, Blossom and Victory Bell, as well as her fully evolved starter Pokemon Torterra, and finally her ace Roserade. So not only is she carrying the entire grass type community on her back like Torterra, but she's doing it with so much power and style. Good luck getting through this Elite Four member. But you're the champ in the making, nothing stopping you fam. Not even the final Elite Four member Rourke, the rock type specialist. And you smell it? Can you smell what the Rourke is cooking? Yeah, I made that joke. I also made this final Elite Four member team, and he's got his lead Tyranitar, Aerodactyl, Armaldo, Relicanth, and his ace Rampardos. Now, who said rock types are easy? Yeah, bring all the water and grass types you can, because that won't even help you. Trust me. But there you have it. That's every single gym leader and Elite Four member reversed. But wait, what about the champion? Now we could make Cynthia the champion, but that's so boring. And if you've been following the series, then you already know we typically go for a bit more wackier choice. And that's no different for this video. Meet Palmer, Barry's father, and he makes Cynthia look like a walk in the park. His first Pokemon is whichever starter's final evolution that you and your rival didn't pick. Then things get pretty crazy. He's got a Milotic. Dragonite, Rhyperior, and Heatran, but his ace and newly acquired Pokemon is the ultimate test in this whole challenge. And that's his Regigigas. Can you beat him before Regigigas' ability fades away? Find out on the next episode of Pokemon Reversed. Dun 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 dun, yeah. Thanks for watching. Check out this video next, and see you soon. Bye.